Ivor Bennett is at the Cenotaph for us there. Um, the service there uh, concluding, people laying, laying their wreaths of poppies there, Ivor. Um, but it's an unusual weekend, isn't it? Because there's this confluence of events. There are the, uh, the events that take place every year with great solemnity that we have just uh, been showing on our screens there to, to mark the servicemen and women in conflicts uh, over, over the decades, but also this march taking place today, the pro-Palestinian march, which has uh, been excluded from going near the Cenotaph where you are. Yeah, that's right. So um, we are on the edge of the exclusion zone that's been set up around the Cenotaph. You might just be able to make it out over my shoulder around 100 metres uh, or so down uh, Whitehall. And the two minutes silence here was observed with a typical solemnity. Um, and it's quite unusual, of course, to see this very busy street in the heart of, of London here so still and hear it so, so quiet. Um, and there will now be a service um, held by the Western Front Association um, and there will also be a service to my left through a uh, horse guards parade uh, over here but the the calm that was that accompanied the 11 o'clock uh, moment was in stark contrast contrast to what we witnessed um, around 20 minutes before that when uh, there were clashes and skirmishes between uh, what the police call counter-protesters and, and some of the officers here who have been stationed uh, at the Cenotaph because of uh, what is happening today. So uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of what we call counter, what the Met are calling counter-protesters are here. They say to defend the Cenotaph and support the armed forces. That's after the likes of Tommy Robinson, the founder of the far-right English Defence League, rallied his supporters online early in the week, uh, telling them to come to, to London to protect the Cenotaph, in his words, uh, in light of that uh, pro-Palestine march being held. We've seen him among the crowds. A lot of his uh, affiliates and like-minded uh, uh, groups have also sent out messages to their supporters too. So um, thousands, I'd say, are now here, a lot of them with flags. They are chanting. Uh, some of it is very aggressive, actually. They're chanting things like, England till I die. Um, You're not English anymore at the police officers who are here. There was pushing, there was shoving, there was shouting at police officers, and we saw some bottles thrown. We were in amongst it at one point, and it did feel um, really quite tense. Uh, and uh, police officers were very keen to try and keep um, the crowds into the areas where they've marked out um, behind the metal barriers that they've put out here away from the Cenotaph. So others, members of the public, veterans, families have also gathered, uh, can also um, show their respect at this, at this moment. It's important to say, though, the police were expecting these so-called counter-protesters uh, to come here, and they are allowed to be here. Um, the police set this exclusion zone up for those taking part in the pro-Palestine march um, and they did expect some level of uh, disorder in their words, as you, as you can see here. The worry is, though, if the two sides come together, and that's why they've set up this exclusion zone, to try and keep the two sides apart, but they also fear that um, the group may not be entirely honest when they say that they're merely here to protect the war memorials, um, to honour the fallen, as they say. They fear that some might have ulterior motives. Um, many are here with face coverings, balaclavas, and so they've given themselves some extra powers to search people for weapons and also to ask them to remove their face coverings. If they refuse, then they can be arrested. We haven't seen any arrests so far, and the atmosphere now is calm once again. Um, but I think a lot of the officers here clearly uh, are watching and waiting to see how things unfold because it was very tense earlier and the fear is it could become tense again later.